Remember this grey rainbow mini quilt? I mentioned at the time it was a test run for a bigger project. So now that I know the technique is going to work, it's time to tackle the real thing. What I'm going to be making is a wall hanging for the new rainbow room that we have on campus. The rainbow room is a space where our LGBTQIA plus students and staff can go and hang out, have a break, do some study in a quiet place, just generally escape from any harassment or judgment that they're feeling out on the main campus. My union, the Tertiary Education Union, I'm even wearing the right t-shirt today, <laughs> wanted to support the Rainbow Room in some way. So they suggested that they could commission me to make a quilt as a wall hanging for the room. Now, as I've said before, I don't really take commissions. I, for one, I don't think I could charge someone what a quilt is actually worth. I mean, those quilters among you know just how much time and money goes into a quilt. It's something you do out of love, you don't do it for money. And also, I don't like how as soon as you take money for something, you've got to do what that person wants, which kind of stifles your creativity a bit. I do this for fun. But in this case, well, it's a cause that obviously is very close to my heart. And I agreed that yes, I'd make a wall hanging, but I didn't want to be paid for my time. I said the union can pay for the materials that go into it because then it wouldn't at least be an expense to me but I'd still be doing something where the mahi is is being done out of aroha not out of earning money. So I met with the president of Q Canterbury which is the student LGBTQIA plus club and asked if they had any thoughts on what the design should be because it's shared space um, and they were quite happy for me to just make whatever I felt like as long as I had some sort of rainbow on it but they also showed me the logo they just had designed for the club and it's a rainbow ribbon and it encircles two hands doing you know the heart thing and that gave me the idea of doing something that would kind of echo those shapes without totally reproducing the logo because one thing it would be really hard to make hands like I'd have to do some really complicated drawing and then applique and uh, hands are hard to draw <laughs> but also you know, I didn't want it to just have their club logo because their club logo changes every few years and so it would be out of date and also it would not be giving the signal this is a room for everyone. It would make it seem like it was just a student room. Now, they were really happy with that idea. They were quite happy to just let me go and explore the idea of a circle and a heart and just see where that took me. So then I had to figure out how I was actually going to make this quilt which is why I did the grey rainbow because I was exploring the idea of could you use like a Dresden template but instead of using the full blade just use a little end section and use that to make a circle. Of course the really fun thing about taking a commission it means I can justify buying some pre-cuts and not just working entirely out of my stash. Because I want to keep a scrappy effect even though I'm working from pre-cuts. I bought some pre-cuts from some completely different ranges. I've got here some Laura Birch. This one obviously isn't a full rainbow but it's got everything except the blues and greens so I can add some blues and greens from my stash or elsewhere. And then I've got an Ellison glass. Don't ask me which... oh it must be stitched. I am terrible with like designers and stuff because I don't really care because everything I do is all scrappy so I'm not like trying to stick to a single designer or a single range. So the only reason I remember 
who this is is because the label's still on it. Then I've got some more pastel-y type colours. With a soft spectrum vintage texture from Wilmington. And finally, this one is another Wilmington one, is Magic Colours. I'm going to be supplementing this from my stash a bit. So even though I probably won't be using like all of the jelly rolls in the two inch squares, it's kind of swapping out stuff that's in my stash for stuff that's going to go into my stash. So I don't feel bad about charging for all this fabric. So now's the fun bit. I get to actually open these. There's a good range of colours in there. You can also see the other reason I don't buy pre-cuts very often is because they're ridiculously expensive here. Still a lot cheaper than going out and buying like a quarter of metre of each one, which would have cost even more. I think they're going to combine really nicely with these other ones. I'm going to have 36 wedges in total because I've got a 10 degree wedge. So what I think I need to do now is work out some sort of spectrum of all the fabrics plus whatever I'm going to take out of my stash. From the experimenting I did with my grey rainbow, I think I'm probably going to be mostly using two and a half inch strips and then putting them together into sort of four patches, elongated four patches, which I'll then cut the wedges out of. You'll notice there's no pastel pieces on my design wall. Once I started laying them out, I realized the pastels just didn't fit. So I set those fabrics aside. I'm deliberately not matching the seams on the four patches because that's going to help hide the wedge construction of the rainbow and make it look more like the colours are just randomly flowing into each other. The other thing I'm doing to make the wedges look more random is cutting them all at different angles. First of all I'm cutting a 5 inch wide strip from each four patch at a bit of an angle and then I'm going to use that to cut the wedges. It wastes quite a bit of fabric doing it this way but I'm hoping it'll make the circle look like it was pieced from all different shape bits of fabric. Well, that's all the wedges cut. Now I have to sew them together. But first I'm going to turn under the raw edges on the top and bottom. I clipped the corners before pressing the seams, both to reduce the bulk and so the little dog ears wouldn't stick out beyond the wedges. That looks almost like a circle. So the next step is to make a background. I'm going to keep it pretty simple because I want the rainbow to really stand out. So I'm just going to patch together some 5 inch squares of low volume fabrics. part, getting the circle to actually be circular. This is the downside of effectively cutting out the middle of the Dresden, is it's got no stability at all. I figured out the best way to get it into a circle was to work in quadrants. I used the Dresden template to measure out where four points of the circle should be, and then I just worked my way around the circle adjusting each section in between those points until it looked about right and then pinned everything in place with a massive number of pins. the 
circle for now because I'm going to sew it on properly when I quilt it. So the next step is going to be to make the heart for the centre. I'm going to use this black and rainbow fabric for the heart. It'll be a little bit less contrasty than plain black would be, plus it keeps the rainbow theme going. I'd originally thought I'd make the background a little bit smaller than this, but I think it'll work better with that extra space. It really makes the rainbow stand out more. It does mean though that the corners are possibly going to look a little bit empty, so I might have to think about what I could add into those big empty spaces just to break it up a bit. But first, the heart. I'm going to use raw edge applique for this part, so I need to sketch out a heart shape and then transfer it onto some fusible web. before I go any further to make sure that the heart looks like it's roughly the right size. I think that should be okay. a few ideas here. I thought originally maybe putting something rainbow in those corners but I think that'll detract too much from the big central circle so I'm actually leaning towards something just more abstract like this just some sort of shape in the corner that will just fill that space a little bit and draw the eye into the centre. Yeah, I think that was the right choice. Well, I haven't sewn down any of the applique yet because I'm going to do that while I'm quilting it. But otherwise, that's the quilt top done. And that's all I'm going to get done this weekend. So I think this is a good place to finish part one of the video. Don't forget to do all those nice internet things like liking and subscribing. And I'll see you next time. Kakete internet. <laughs>